What's up guys, War here. Today we're going to go over one of my favorite builds in all of Diablo, and that is the God DH speed build. Let's do it. Oh, the God DH. This is one of the best speed farming builds in all of Diablo. It has been since a while since they redid the entire build and released it. It's been absolutely insane, as you guys can see from the gameplay. This build is amazing. It just speeds through and blasts through greater rifts like nothing else. Right now, the only thing that beats it is the monk, which I'll link above, guys. I have a video on that monk build. Check that out. But the Demon Hunter God DH, it's one of my favorite builds. I'm a Demon Hunter main, so it's one of the best builds in the game. So let's break down how this build actually works. So starting off, you want to use Hungering Arrow, your main skill, to build up momentum meters. And you want to get that to 20 because it increases your damage and your strafe speed when you strafe. Then as you're strafing, guys, that's going to do all the damage with Hungering Arrow. It magnifies it as you strafe, which is absolutely amazing. You want to use Vengeance on top of that for survivability. And then you have the preparation to regenerate discipline as well as smoke screen for some added defense to get through walls or any kind of crowd control effects so the whole point of this build guys is just to build up your momentum counters and don't let them go away so every about three to four seconds guys you want to be hitting hungering arrow again because the build is built off of your primary attack strafe is going to be shooting your hungering arrow and we want to use that to deal as much damage as we can this build is absolutely insane. It's one of the fastest builds in all of Diablo for speed farming. And the God DH is just flavorful. It's really, really nice to play. It's really chill. It's one of the best builds in the game to play for speed farming. All right, let's get into all the gear that you need for the build. All right, guys, starting off, you're going to want the full six-piece set of the Gears of Dreadlands. The six-set bonus give you, gives you 15,000 increased damage to your Hungering Arrow, Devouring Arrow ability, which is your primary stat. And then while you're strafing and you get all these momentum stacks, you're going to get 8% increased damage and movement speed as you're moving around. So you want to keep those momentum stacks at 20 all the time. Okay, moving on to our weapons, guys. First one we're going to talk about is Dawn. This is a key weapon in the build. I have mine at 65%. You want to get this as close to max as possible, along with a at least 38, 39 percent cooldown reduction i have mine at 41 i would probably suggest to be at least 39 a 39 percent cooldown reduction on top of max dawn gives you permanent upkeep on vengeance you want vengeance all the time for the damage reduction on top of the damage increase that you get from using the ability so try to keep your cooldown reduction as high as possible next we're using Valor's request because all of your strafe projectiles pierce your enemies so they pierce non-stop so we can deal damage to the most amount of many enemies as possible now if you don't want to use Valor's request because you're feeling squishy or you're feeling a little bit you know um like you're getting hit a lot taking a lot of damage you can use the fortress ballista which will give you a shield bonus when you're strafing around which is really good so you can use that instead of the bequest but i like Valor's, so i'm using Valor's. <laughs> Onto the belt, guys, we're using Hunter's Wrath because your primary skills attack 30% faster and deal increased damage. Mine is really low at 172%. That's really bad. I need to get a better one. But you want to have this as close to 200% as possible. Onto our bracers, guys, the Wraps of Clarity. The Wraps of Clarity uh, give you a damage reduction up to 50% for every time your hatred generators when you're generating hatred. So as you're strafing around, and using your abilities, you will always have wraps of clarity up. Next, guys, is our rings and amulets. Pretty standard. This is used on a lot of different builds, guys. Of course, the squirts along with focus and restraint. All of these are really, really good. Gives you a big damage reduction and big damage boost. So these are just a no-brainer inside this build for maximum damage. Our legendary debt gems that we're using for the build, guys, are the Bane of the Trap, which is arguably still the best gem in the game for the increased um, crowd control effects for damage we got a uh, simplicity strength to increase the damage of our primary skill because everything is based on using hungering arrow and then we also have tegook which gives us increased damage for each channeled spell or each channeled skill which we're using with strafe which is channeling and then it stacks up to 10 times and then we get a two percent increased armor for every stack so a nice little damage buff with a defense shield which is great so those are our legendary gems all right, guys, let's get right into our Kanai's Cube abilities. In the weapon slot, we have the Ninth Satchel, which increases Hungering Arrow damage and guarantees it piercing up to four times. Depth Diggers increases our primary skills, deal 100% additional damage because everything is based on Hungering Arrow. 
and then we got elusive ring so after we cast uh smoke smoke screen we get the 60 percent reduced damage for damage reduction which is great into our skills guys we got hungry arrow which is the bread and butter of the skills our primary strafe so that way we can move at maximum speed and deal additional damage we got smoke screen for a little bit of defensibility so that way we can vanish and get through walls or crowd control effects preparation to keep our discipline up so that way we can constantly cast this phantom knives is a really good defensive ability you get additional armor and then of course vengeance um, which is a really powerful skill for the build we get increased damage and increased damage reduction again guys if you have the max vengeance with 40 percent um, cooldown reduction you have permanent uptime on this into our passives tactical advantage so that way every time we vault or use smoke screen we get a 6% movement increase which is great ambush we deal 40% more damage to enemies above 75% health which is amazing call of the week increased damage against slaughter chilled enemies by 20% this is triggered by our gems and then our focus and restraint which is great and then numbing traps gives reduced damage from the enemies which is great helps keep us alive a little bit longer now if you want to change a few of these things guys you can go into your skills like fan of knives is very flexible you don't have to have this for the added defense especially if you're feeling squishy you could do companion um wolf companion which would be great that's a really good one that would be a good substitution for fan of knives you don't actually have to use this and then as far as your tacticals you can change these if you don't want the damage reduction from numbing traps you could do thrill of the hunt so you you deal even more damage from your hatred spenders, which would be your strafe against slowed enemies, and they're always going to be slow. You could do archery for increased uh, crit chance, which would be 10% because you're using two hand ones. Or hot pursuit if you want to move a little bit faster, or even awareness, guys, if you have, you know, especially if you're on higher hardcore and you wanted to have an extra life so you don't lose out on stuff. Any of those is good, but this is a really good feel for the build, guys. So you can feel free to swap those out, but this is pretty solid. Now, moving on to our follower, guys. Again, you want to have Nemesis Bracers along with Flavor of Time. So every time you hit pylons, you get they last longer and you spawn champions to get through those greater rifts even faster. Um, we're using the Ring of Royal Grandeur so that way we can get double death rests and double um, keys. But you want to have 25k main stat, guys. This gives you maximum um, cooldown reduction and damage increase on the um, Enchantress. I don't have it yet because I need to still swap some of these over from Dex to um, Intelligence, but still, this real works really, really well. You want to have 25k main stats so you get um, the maximum amount of abilities from your follower. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my favorite build in all of Diablo, which is the Demon Hunter. I'm Demon Hunter main, and the Speed GR build is just one of my favorites in all of Diablo. I really, there are no changes happened in Season 26, and I don't think there's going to be any changes to the build in Season 27. So this build is still going to be very viable going into Season 27, so I look forward to that and still playing Demon Hunter. Although the Necromancer and the Wizard look crazy, but... This build is absolutely insane. You're going to be able to blast through GR 100s in under two minutes, GR 105s, GR 110s in a couple minutes, two to three minutes. So this build is really, really good, guys. It's one of the best speed farming builds in all of Diablo. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like as it really does help me out, guys. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. It really helps out the channel. We have been just blasting content left and right almost on a daily basis for these videos before season 27 hits. So thank you guys to everybody who's been watching and supporting the channel thank you very much and thank you for watching and as always guys stay gaming and i'll catch you in the next one peace